Renaissance masterpieces are on sale this week at Christie's, the world's largest fine arts auction house. Old Masters Week in New York features pieces like this virgin and child from the 1500s, worth $365,000. Much of the art depicts sacred subjects. These are works by some of the greatest portrait painters of the Italian Renaissance. The master of the legend of St. Ursula shows angels supporting the veil of St. Veronica. It's actually oil and gold on oak panel. It was appraised at $350,000, but this week someone brought, bought it for more than half a million dollars. Dr. Jim Sullivan is author of The Beauty of Faith, Christian Art, and the New Evangelization. Of course, you contribute essays on our beautiful art for uh, Magnificat magazine. You've also worked here at the National Gallery of Art in D.C. Why is Renaissance art still so popular and so powerful, really? You know, we are in the age of the Renaissance, that incredible period of art history when we see this unparalleled flowering of artistic creativity and genius, really, in the painting, in sculpture, and in architecture. Um, we, we have not yet seen this since then, uh, uh, since the Renaissance. And so much of the subject matter of Renaissance art is Christian in theme, in inspiration, in origin, in patronage. Uh, so it's not surprising then that we have this great interest in, in um, these beautiful masterpieces of Renaissance art. There's so much detail and there's such spirit behind us. Tell about the Madonna of the Eucharist by Botticelli. It just sold at Christie's for almost $850,000. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Um, you know, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. That was what the Second Vatican Council taught us. Um, and in, in Ecclesiae de Eucharistia, St. John Paul II said, but the church draws her life from the Eucharist. I think this beautiful painting entitled The Madonna of the Eucharist uh, is a wonderful example that brings to life these truths uh, and, and of the faith. Um, it's an exquisite 15th century Renaissance painting from the studio of Sandro Botticelli. Um, and what we know is that Botticelli, uh, this is around the time that he first sets up his own independent studio. He's a master painter, and so many artists would have wanted to work with him, uh, to be his apprentice and to, to be his assistant. And so this painting uh, comes to us from an artist who worked in close proximity to Botticelli um, and who would have been one of his assistants. Um, it's just an exquisite gathering of three figures uh, where we see the Madonna and child and an angel holding up a bowl of grapes and wheat um, as they, all three of them, look at this symbols of the Eucharist. In the interest of time, I want to move on to another of these wonderful paintings, The Return of the Prodigal Son, Jacopo Bassano. What's the most significant thing about this? You know, the most beautiful aspect of this painting is that we, the artist uses light and darkness to really highlight the spiritual drama of conversion and repentance on the part of the prodigal son, and also of um, the loving, tender mercy on the part of the father. And he uses light dramatically. There's really warm light. There's areas of darkness in the painting. But most of all, we're drawn into this, really, this drama of conversion and repentance. Um, and we see that you know, this, this theme of the prodigal son will be relevant, will echo in our hearts as long as there is division and conflict and alienation from God. The prodigal son is the image of humanity alienated and estranged from God. It's one of my favorite parables because I relate to that son and the father welcoming and that beautiful work of art really, really captured it. Dr. Jim Sullivan, thank you so much for the insight that you have shared with us tonight and thank you for coming. Thank you so much.